Hi, my dear students. How are you? Ramadan Kareem, and hope you're having good times in Ramadan. Today, we are going to have a new lesson from Chapter 11. Our lesson is about ratio, proportion, and percentages from Chapter 11, Lesson 8, about understanding percent. The lesson is on pages 668 to 669. The main objective in our lesson is to know how to write a percent of a given situation on a 100 grid. Dear grade five students, as usual, these are our instructions. You need to download all the attached resources. Open the student book, page 668 to 669. Open the notebook, a new page, write the date and the day and the lesson title. Follow the instructions and you can repeat as many as you want. Solve the questions from the student book on the notebook as the slides mention. Let's do this quick warming up. First of all, we need to remember how to write an equal ratio with denominator of 100. And we already know that ratio is actually can be written as a fraction. So we need here to write these fractions with denominator of 100. If you look at the first one, in the denominator there is 10. How can we make the 10 100 by multiplication? Yes, we multiply by 10. And what we do down, we do it up. So that's going to be 10 out of 100. In number B, we have 2. And we know that 2 times 50 is 100. And 1 times 50 is 50. So it's 50 over 100. In part C, there is 1 out of 4. What do we multiply the 4 by to get 100? Yes. 4 times 25. So we get 25 out of 100. In question 2, write each of these fractions in simplest form. Now to write the simplest form, we talked a lot about the simplest form. In the simplest form, we just divide the numerator and the denominator by their greatest common factor. So in 55 and 100, if you list all the factors of each one, you will notice that the greatest common factor is 5. So we divide 55 by 5 and 100 by 5. We get 11 out of 20. In part B, there is 40 out of 100. The greatest common factor between them is only 20. So. 40 divided by 20 is 2. 100 divided by 20 is 5. Again, how did we figure out this 20 from? From listing all the factors of 40 and all the factors of 100 and finding the greatest common factor between them. Now, what does a percent mean? The word percent is actually a ratio in which the first quantity is compared to 100. You know where the word percent comes from? Percent is actually a word from two parts. It's per cent. And per in English means for each. Three, per, two, whatever. So per means for each. Cent is we know that in the dollar there are 100 cents. So per cent means for each 100. So it's all the time compared to 100. And this is how the symbol of the percent looks like. Percent can be defined as of 100 or out of 100. Now, here, 
a percent is just a fraction, but that fraction is unique. It's all the time over 100. That's the important or the idea of the percent. It's a fraction with 100 in the denominator. So if you look at this percent, look, 50 percent, 50 percent. What does that mean as a fraction? It means 50 and percent, we already said, out of 100. So it's 50 out of 100. So we can write the percentage as a fraction over 100. Can we choose another number in the denominator? Of course not. It's all the time over 100. But when you write your fraction, you can simplify it more. What does a percent mean? As we see, it's a fraction out of 100. Now, if you look at 20 over 100, this is a fraction with a numerator of 20 and a denominator of 100. If we want to simplify this fraction, we divide the numerator and the denominator by the common factor. And we know the simplest or the common factor, the greatest one is 20. Because the factors of 20 are 1, 2, 10, 4, 5, 20. And there is 20 as a factor of 100. So we divide 20 by 20, which is 1, 100 by 20, which is 5. So that's the simplest form. The percent is also can be written as a ratio. We can write 20 over 100 as 20 to 100. And when we simplify it, we get 1 to 5 or 1 over 5, which is the simplest form again. This, there is where we can see percentages. We can see the percentages and the discounts on sale, when there is a sale of 50% or 10% or all goods list 50%. This house, for example, the price of fit will be, will have a sale, for example. So we see the percentages a lot in the malls when we go to the mall to do some shopping. Now, we're going now to practice on writing fractions in simplest form and representing shading parts of each grid. Now look at this grid. 50% of this grid, which has 10 by 10, so see we have 10 squares and 10 squares, so 10 by 10, 100 squares in all. 50% means 50 parts out of 100. So we just shade 50 parts. As a fraction, we can write that 50 over 100. How do we simplify that? You divide them by the common factor. So divide by 50 and we divide by 50. So you get the lowest term. So this is how we write the fraction. You divide this by 50 and you divide this by 50. So 50 divided by 50 is one, and 100 divided by 50 is two. So this is the lowest term or the simplest form of this fraction. So if you notice the 50%, we can write it as one over two by doing the simplest form of 50 out of 100. If you look at this new grid one, 10% means 10 parts out of 100. So you just take look, 10 parts out of 100. So 10 over 100. How do you think we can simplify this? We need to divide. What do you think we should divide by to get the simplest form? Excellent, 10. So we can divide the numerator by 10 
and the denominator by 10. So when you divide 10 by 10, you get 1. 100 by 10, you get 10. So this is the simplest, oops, this is the simplest form. So look, 10% as a fraction in simplest form can be written as 1 out of 10. Another question. Here, 25% means 25 parts out of 100. So we see 10 and 10 and another 5, so we get 25 in all. How do you write that as a fraction? Yes, it's 25 over 100. Now we need to do the simplest form. What do you think the simplest form will be like? We're going to divide 25 by a number and 100 by a number. What do you think the common number? No, it's not 5. The greatest common one is, after listing all the factors, you divide 25 by 25 and 100 divided by 25. So when you divide them by 25, you get 1 out of 4. So 25% is actually 1 over 4. So whenever you see 1 over 4, or let's say a quarter, this is actually the same as 25%. Okay, let's do one more example. Here, we have 75%. 75%, it means 75 parts out of 100. So we count 75 parts, and that's as a fraction. Yes, it's 75 over 100. Let's simplify it. What do you think? these numbers can be divided by yes 75 we divide it by 25 and 100 you can divide it by 25 again you can get these numbers after listing the factors and looking for the greatest common factor if you can if you forget that you can go back to that lesson the simplest form lesson so, 75 divided by 25 is 3, and 100 divided by 25 is 4. So, 75% as a fraction is 75 over 100, and in simplest form is 3 over 4, or 3 quarters. So, whenever you see 3 out of 4, that's actually a percentage of 75%. Okay, now, here, look at this, 100%. 100%, it means 100 parts out of 100 parts. So we need 100 out of 100, which is 1 over 1. That's actually 1 whole. 1 whole not one as one one whole so in this grid 100 small squares now you should or actually uh, try to uh, memorize or let's say not memorizing it's using logic for the most commonly used persons we know that half as we saw few minutes ago is the same as 50%. The 100% is like any whole, 2 out of 2, if we're talking about 2 in the denominator. If you look here, when you have 4 parts, it's 4 out of 4. When you have 5 parts, it's 5 out of 5, we get 100%. When there are 10 parts, the 10 out of 10 is 100%. So, 50% is generally for half. 25%, as I told you, it's a quarter. 75% is three quarters. Now look, 50% is half, but half here is not written as one over two because 
half of four is two. So it's two out of four. Now look at five. The one over five is the same as 20%. The 40%, it's 40 out of 100. And then if you get the simplest form, you will notice it's two out of 25, two out of five, sorry. 60% is 60 out of 100. If you divide 60 and 100 by 20, you get three out of five. Same as 80%. Now the tenths are so easy. Three tenths is 30%. Four tenths is 40%. Five out of 10 is 50%. Six out of 10, 60%. Seven out of 10, 70%. And same as 80 and 90%. So these percentages are very used. They are commonly used percentages. So it's very important to know how to get them or use logic to memorize them. Let's now do some practicing in the course book, page 669. And uh, you need to solve these questions. You're gonna have four minutes. In every grid paper, you just need to write the fraction that represent each of them in the simplest form, and then write the percentages. It's just about counting here, so easy. Four minutes to do them. Once you're done, you can continue watching the video. Let's check the answers. For the first one, if you count the blue squares, you will notice there are 55. So as a fraction, it's 55 over 100, which is 11 over 20 in simplest form. What is that in percentages? It's 55%, yes. In number four, there are 50, if you count the blue squares, they are 50 out of 100, which is 50%. And the simplest form is one over two. Number six, if you count the squares, they are also 50 out of 100, which is half in simplest form which is 50%. So it's very important to be careful that the question needs the lowest term. Lowest term is the simplest form. In number nine, if you count the blue squares, there are 20 blue squares out of 100 squares. If you simplify the 20 out of 100, which is 20%, it's one over five. That's why we say to memorize these percentages. 20% is all the time one over five. 50% is all the time half. 55%, this is it in simplest form. Another four minutes to do questions five and 11. Once you're done, you can click to see the answers. Let's check the answers. In question five, they told you, if a 10 by 10 grid has 100 squares that are completely shaded, so see, all the squares are completely shaded, what percent represent the shaded part? If all of them are shaded, so it's 100%, yes. In question 11, the picture at the right shows that 50% is not all the time the same amount, but it means the same thing. We know that 50% is half, but is it like half of $10 exactly the same as half of $100? Of course not. It shows different amounts. So the half of this one is more than the half of the smaller one. 50% of the smaller figure is less than the 50% of the larger figure. That was our lesson. I hope you found it smoothly easy. You can repeat watching the lesson as much as you want and your homework 
is through these links. We will send you the links, of course. Your homework is actually not due Saturday, it's due Tuesday. Okay, and on Tuesday, the date is 28 of April, not after 2.30 p.m. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.